D&D Beyond, and it has just occurred to me that I should have started this stream by not being in frame at all, because today we are talking sneaky, tricksy, wonderful rogues. Uh, so pretend that I did a gag where you couldn't see me, and then I revealed myself with a sneak attack. Just Surprise, imagine puppy. that it happened. <laughs> yes! Pup is a rogue. There we are. Sam already setting a very high standard for our rogue stream. Uh, please welcome back to D&D Beyond, the wonderful Sam Deleb. They are one of my favorite people to roll dice with, one of my favorite humans in general, multi-talented. You know them from all over the internet. But if you don't know them, Sam, a little bit maybe about uh, who you are and what you're up to? Yes, I am a role-playing performer and variety streamer throughout the Twitchernet, and lately I have been an alien. I've been an alien in space as part of Clear Skies, a Star Trek RPG. I've been an alien, <clears throat> definitely a human on Earth, as part of Power Play RPG, also on Q Times. And of late, I have been an honest-to-blog humanoid uh, on and or on Roll Together RPG, uh, the D&D show. I've just started up, and I can't remember the last time I laughed until I wheezed, but that show will do that for me. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. All right. I love talking D&D with Sam because Sam is uh, one of the strongest performers I know and gets great at in character, but also loves the crunch. Uh, so... I wanted to find out, like, from someone from from a perspective, and we don't have to focus on on deep crunch for this, but it is an option. When I asked what you might want to talk about, you were like, you know what I love? I love a rogue. So first off, why? What makes rogues special in Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, rogues are one of the very, very classic, not necessarily the oldest but one of the classic elements like they're pretty much og as far as i know if not perfectly basic D. &D. uh and I want to say, so like thief was one of the originals I, to the best of my memory please correct me chat or add to my knowledge uh should that be appropriate hmm? and so they're they're part of the very history of it and as a result D, D is built up around the expectation that you have this archetype around but they are so very fun for me in play for despite my uh crunchy introduction being a very free-flowing class to play i will often take up a wizard or a druid or a cleric or the full casters who one often spends all of the time in between one's combat round going frantically through one's spell list, trying to figure out which of the situational spells is probably going to be best in this particular circumstance. Oh, the turn anxiety. A rogue, I say to you, has none of that. They're just <laughs> going to go do great. They are beautifully consistent in all of the domains that you want in combat, in skill checks, in... And that consistency is the ability to escape your consequences. You can just outrun them. You can dodge them. You can dash away from them. The possibilities are endless, except for the possibility that you might get caught. They didn't even see you. Your stealth check is like 93. Rogues. That's fascinating. I had never drawn the connection really between the things that the rogue is good at and you you've hit the nail on the head there and getting away with it, getting escaping the consequences. It's what connects uh, extra ability to dodge or evade and sort of these socially infiltration -y abilities uh, that sort of the you're tr capable of great things unless someone has seen through you or spotted you or otherwise poked a hole in whatever your whole situation is. Uh, and well, I guess- At which point, big uh-oh, but it means that as a player, you can do bigger, badder ideas because 
you will have some layer of insulation from the consequences. And the ability to go hard into the bad idea is, I think, characteristic of how a lot of people play rogues. And I think that's in part why, that we we can we can get away with it. And maybe our friend trying to come with us making a stealth check in the heavy armor might not be able to. Uh, but it... <laughs> I love the ability to do bigger and badder ideas, and the rogue lets you do that all of the time. Ah, I love that. That's beautiful. Okay, what are your tips for playing a rogue? Mm. What the biggest tip I have in a combat is simply to pay attention to your bonus action economy. Some classes, the bonus action isn't really important. And some classes, you know, your monks, you are looking through your use of key points, much like the wizard is looking through the situational spell list, because monk is, I spend a key point, I can do anything in the universe. <laughs> there are like seven things that you have to choose from. And a rogue does not quite have, although the cunning action is pretty full, you're always going to use a bonus action because cunning actions are great. It's simply a question of when you want to use it because a lot of the time, what we're going to do with that 93 stealth check is hide because it generates advantage, which allows uh, our sneak attack to provoke even if none of the other circumstances pertain. And if you can time it right and start your action from hiding and end your action from hiding by doing the bonus action after the attack, then no one sees you in between the rounds because uncanny dodge is great, but it only works once. And that monster has multi-attack. I don't know why they always have multi-attack if you're a rogue. If you're something else, they may not, but if you are a rogue, always multi-attack and there's nothing more frustrating than getting hit for 30 points of damage because it does like Seven, 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 and then you cut one of those sevens in That's half. That's a very good point. And you're sitting in there, there in your leather, being like feeling quite exposed. Uh, for but you don't who... have to if they never see you. <laughs> for folks who are brand new to this, we are throwing out some of the class features of Rogue, so you get very important things like cunning action. Uh, at starting at second level, your quick thinking and agility allow you to move and act quickly. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat. This action can be used only to take the dash, disengage, or hide actions. Now, each of those is a battlefield maneuver that's available to everyone, but rogues can do it real quick. They can do it in combination with their regular thing, and various of the subclasses and later evolutions of rogues will be able to sort of combo on to cunning action and be like, here's some other things that you can do right quick in a pinch. Uh, in order to create these these combination circumstances. Um, and of course, we've been talking a lot about Uncanny Dodge, starting at fifth level. When an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction, separate from your action and your bonus action. It's a lot simpler than it sounds in practice. You can use your reaction to have the attacks damage against you. Um, and of course, that will also level up as you uh, gain more experience. And... Uh, those are, let's see, excellent. Beautifully uh, We have some input chat is very interested in Pupper. So if you have a brief introduction to Pupper if, while we're paused. Yes, this is my pup deucer, Ferocia, extremely ferocious, as you see, Gur R Rarg. Uh, it was her <laughs> birthday this week, so feel free to wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Aww. Well, thank you very much for bringing uh, an extra special guest uh, to stream today. Now, what are your tips? And let's let's get into it as we go, because we are also going to actually build a rogue today. So if I am building my very first rogue of all time to start playing Dungeons & Dragons or just to do my first rogue, what would you recommend uh, as a starting arrangement? And let's go ahead and start it up. I'm All right, sounds character. lovely. Uh, so I think I'm going to do at least an archetypal variant on what my first rogue was because I was completely unfamiliar with the class uh, like three years ago when I'd started and I had only played a couple classes at that point. When I took up my first rogue, I had had 
oh goodness, maybe seven months of RPG experience. I was a pretty new Beb. So this is the experience from new Beb Sam, who still thinks uh, that this stuff is great. Uh, so we are going to build ourselves a little bit of an elf swashbuckler. And uh, the goof that we were talking about on stream, since we have the character name up, uh, this will be Errol Elfin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do I spell that? E-R-R-O-L, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Errol, Elf. Errol Elflin? I think either can work. Chat, please drop your opinions. Errol Elflin? Errol Elfin. <laughs> I'm going to say Errol E, know. and we have another chance to revisit this when we get a little later in the character creation. Excellent. Um, good. All right. So we're good with that. Yes, perfect. Um, all right. Because there's an excellent so are we, in the... Yep. Are we leaning into some of the, the optional, like the things that come with being an elf, or are we doing it for flavor, um, or is it a combination today? Um, so I often find myself playing uh, variant humans just for... Uh, not only for the feat, but because there are so many uh, of players who want to play what are coded as unusual races. And I figure mm. if I can contribute by being the va the vanilla, then it makes everyone very exciting by contrast. Um, but Aww. nonetheless, today uh, we are taking any kind of elf uh, that we want to take. Um, so a, a standard elf would be perfectly, perfectly lovely. Um, standard, or, or any Eladrin, whoever makes your little hearts let's, sing. Let's go Wood Elf, you know? Uh, I love Wood Elf. That's very classic as well. Uh, the Wood Elf stealth archer is a known thing. As a Wood Elf, you have keen senses and intuition, and your fleet feet carry you quickly and stealthily through your native forests. Uh... The truth is, of course, that especially now that we have uh, the flexible building features that were introduced in Tasha's, you can make any combination work. And uh, it's really what what sounds fun to you. I hope I say that on every stream forever. Um, if I ever don't, please remind me. Uh, but as it happens, we are going to get a plus two dexterity, which is not going to suck um, as, as a rogue. It is not. Uh, <laughs> the dark rogue vision is what call... Is what they call what? I'm just gonna say the rogue is what they call single attribute dependent. Uh, that is to say, if a paladin actually has to worry about swinging the blade and having enough charisma to power that aura, and maybe even having some hit points because you're a paladin and you get hit a lot, rogues have to worry about one thing. Are you running away fast enough for the consequences? And uh, that takes dexterity. All it takes <laughs> is dexterity. And one of the very fun things about a rogue build is that it's so hard to go wrong. It's so, all you put some points into decks and go have fun. There are, <laughs> there's so much room for different variations on the rogue. You can build one that has a lot of wisdom for perception checks because no one in the party will ever take it if you forget perception proficiency. If you take it, everyone else in the party will also have it. But the <laughs> one time you don't, you are hosed, my friend. Uh, you can take <laughs> some intelligence for investigation uh, because historically rogues were in charge of checking for traps and we can still call back on that ancestry if we like. We can be, as we'll probably be today, the charisma charm rogue, but you can have such a broad variation and all of those work so well because there's very little that you need to do to be good at being a rogue, which is particularly nice for new roguists uh, because whatever you chose, that answer works. All you need is dex. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, nothing else will uh, go wrong. And so any kind of flavor that you want to put on top of the rogue uh, will suit. I love that. And it's reinforced here. I, I'm incapable of doing a build without going back and looking at the quick build, no matter how many times I have made something. I always just, you know, just a little check. Um, I run back and I look at the quick build section in the class pages, uh, which in this case says you can make a rogue quickly by following these suggestions. First, 
Dexterity should be your highest ability score. Make intelligence your next highest if you want to excel at investigation or plan to take up the arcane trickster archetype. This text is from the player's handbook where there were just three archetypes. Uh, choose charisma instead if you plan to emphasize deception and social interaction. Uh, and then they recommend the charlatan background. We will get there eventually, uh, but I love just to remind people that these sections exist if you're like, oh no, I make rogue and not sure how. Um, there are always suggestions for first level in the class pages uh, on the on basic rules and player's handbook, which I love very Streaming much. Classes. All right. Um, so we are good. Here are all of the things that come with us being an elf, but we don't have enough time. So I'm going to force myself to move forward to class. Hmm? All right. We tried to have some. <laughs> We are going to be a rogue today, a scoundrel who uses stealth and trickery to overcome obstacles and enemies. Um, it will give us proficiency with saves for dexterity and intelligence. Uh, it reminds you that you're going to lean on the primary ability of dexterity here. Uh, and we can look down at all of the various things that will be relevant to us over time uh, or with experience in rogues. So let's go ahead and add that. Uh, and that but brings I, up a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. cool thing about the core rogue class, separate from the subclass, uh, which is all of those things on the scroll save the capstone ability. So everything before 20th level, you can do all day. The core rogue class has no resource management involved. That is nothing on a short rest or a long rest uh, reset timer. Your sneak attack, you can do every round you can do uh all of your evasions you can do all of your uncanny dodges it's not once per short rest or times equal to proficiency bonus rogues are built for the long adventuring day that someday some dm really will do there will be four encounters between a long rest we promise Probably not, but if they actually do have that one day, your rogue is going to be fine long after uh, your barbarian is out of rages and your cleric is out of spells. Your rogue takes a look in, keeps on ticking all day. And it's very, very nice, especially if you are the kind of player who, I don't know, I never use consumables in games. I have difficulty with resource management as a person because I will hoard and not use my abilities to the utmost. And with rogues, I don't have to worry. <laughs> These are my spell slots. If I use them, I won't have any more. So therefore, we're just going to try to brute force our way through this situation. Is it a smart move? No. Have I done it? Her? Nothing, although there are subclasses that absolutely do have that component, um, and you can have all the spell slots of, as an arcane trickster in magical subtype of rogue. The core class, the things that make you roguey, you can just do. And some of those core things, because we've mentioned them, but we haven't gone into them specifically, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and scroll to... Uh, my favorite, probably yours, hopefully everyone's, it's the best thing, sneak attack. Uh, beginning at first level, you know how to strike subtly and exploit a foe's distraction. Once per turn, you can deal an extra 1d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack if you have advantage on the attack roll. The attack must use a finesse or ranged weapon. You don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within five feet of it. That enemy isn't incapacitated and you don't have disadvantage on the attack roll. And here's where it gets real fun. The amount of the extra damage increases as you gain levels in this class, as shown in the sneak attack column. This is where you just, that's the spell chart. Where's my sneak attack it's, column? Should be right there. Because you oh, top I was looking out at, at a 10d6 uh, starting at, I think, 19th level is when uh, you <laughs> get those final two. Uh, the rogue is not the highest burst damage at the highest levels of the game. That goes to mostly spellcasters and possibly the odd fighter build with enough buffs stacked on top. But like the resource management, uh, rogues are consistent. That dice pool of d6 uh, has a statistical bell curve, meaning most of the time you're getting an average 
role, uh, kind of like the difference between a great axe with a d12 die and a great sword with 2d6. The 2d6 will tend toward the average, and so it is with sneak attack. No, you won't do the most damage at the end game, but you always will do that much damage, and it doesn't cost you spell slots. So overall, you put out really respectable damage, and you do it every round. That's the rogue. That's the sneak attack. And, and in early to mid levels, it really does shine. Uh, rogues perform particularly notably with their sneak attack at those mid levels. Or prepared to uh, so sneak attack performs beautifully throughout the game because you have a very, very, very consistent damage source as long right. as you're sneaky. Indeed. And you can, of course, build and work with your party towards creating conditions that will support you being able to use that. And those that will be some of the things that you accumulate over time is how to set yourself up for the sneak attack. Um, OK, but I took us away from the builder. Um, we're let's take it to level six today. Um, for our rogue, I'm just going to leave the hit points as is, but the, you know, Rogues are are medium squishy, I would say. Your hit die is a D8, so you're not you're not building a huge reservoir of hit points, but you're also not made out of paper. Hmm? We are respectable. We are below the fighter who is intended to frontline and above the squishy uh, wizard and sorcerer who really just should not be perceived. Uh, we <laughs> ideally are not being perceived ourselves with our stealth so that we don't get hit. And then we have a handful of damage mitigation tactics. It's all right if we sometimes are seen, but ideally that's kind of how we do it. We don't have the highest AC because heavy armor would mess us up. We don't have the highest pool of hit points because that con stat went into our decks. What we have is pretty decent HP and a lot of just really hoping someone else gets attacked. And a lot of get out of jail free cards. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. So at first level, of course, we get to pick up some proficiencies. Choose four from acrobatics, athletics, deception, insight, intimidation, investigation, perception, performance, persuasion, sleight of hand, and stealth. Uh, one thing I love is just reading through classes, especially if you're new to them, finding out a general sense of what this class might excel at or be useful for. You skim those options lists because you can't take all of them, but all of them are something that was deemed relevant to what you're going to be doing in one of the three pillars of of D and D. Um, anyway, that's just my, my I love skills. Skills are great, and it's uh, never what do we want to pick? Then with Rogue, um, yeah. you might notice in this list that compared to maybe other builds you've seen, Rogues have more starting proficiencies. Uh, rogues get lots of skills and are really skill focused. If you enjoy the skill part of out of game, uh, out of combat, Rogues are great for that. They are some, they uh, along with maybe lore bards are the best skillsters in the whole ding dang game. So uh, yeah, you can't pick all of them, but you can kind of pick most. <laughs> uh, so. For this one, uh, because we'll be building a swashbuckler, we're going to take a couple of our uh, socials. Uh, so we're going to take deception and persuasion. Uh, personally, I prioritize deception as a proficiency because it does scare me when that one goes wrong. You're much more likely to get into a fight. Persuasion just won't get you a good deal. Deception will get you a combat. Interesting. Uh, I, I like that. I tend to take insight over deception, but that's actually, that's more from my sense of like, I know what's going on, whereas deception is more actively useful for getting stuff done. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. We can't always count on our rogue being the wisest uh, and actually knowing. And I have found of late that I am enjoying, I will be very good at words, but I don't actually understand what's coming back at me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that said, we're going to grab at least one uh, proficiency in from Wisdom. That's going to be our perception. And that's because even if we don't have the highest Wisdom, because we have expertise that we'll get to later, uh, we will always be in pretty good position uh, to contribute to, please someone see the thing. <laughs> so we will grab some perception proficiency, and then uh, we will... Uh, 
finish it out with some acrobatics. Uh, we might notice some some poor things missing. We will get back to that very, very soon. Indeed. I got myself turned around because I forgot I picked Wood Elf and got Keen Senses, so we're already proficient in perception. Uh, Perfect. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. So we get uh, deception, we get persuasion, we get the fourth one you said. We're going to get acrobatics uh, okay. because many GMs will say acrobatics or athletics, whichever you prefer, and then we take them. We take them up on that. <laughs> uh, and for our final, you know what? Uh, let's take an insight because we are being social with this. We have some social skills uh, and heck, it's fun. Uh, now, at this point, when I personally build higher than a level one, uh, I will, at this point in my build, particularly for rogues with this expertise coming up, do a skip around over to the background. Because Ooh. that will give you additional skills, which may be relevant to the expertise you ultimately take. You all know I love messing with the background, so you are speaking my language, although I've oh, clearly good, forgotten good, where that good. actually comes in. Both sing the I Love the Background song together. It's my, it's a very good song. It's right so. here. It was in front of my face, right under the name. Uh, all right. Was, what do we want to do for backgrounds? <laughs> <laughs> so the book recommended Charlatan. I think that's an excellent one. There are a lot of very, very good ones, and it depends on flavor and what skills you might want to take. Uh, once you pick Urchin, I will show you why. Love it. Okay, we are going to be an Urchin. You grew up on the streets alone, orphaned and poor. You had no one to watch over you or to provide for you. So you learned to provide for yourself. You fought fiercely over food and kept a constant watch out for other desperate souls who might steal from you. Uh, it goes on to what allowed you to break free of your desperate circumstances and embark on a better life. I love that there are story prompts built into these. Uh, and it looks like that's gonna give us skill proficiencies. In sleight of hand and stealth and tool proficiencies with the disguise kit and one more it looks like so why why do we want this one yes so one can pick backgrounds for all sorts of different reasons here you can see the synergy with the rogue which allows you in the class skill selection to take even more roguey class skills because we use a lot of those skills and they tend to intertwine. We'll get an acrobatics check to get up into the window and a sleight of hand check to pick the lock. A sleight of hand like deception, high stakes check. I really like having proficiency in it, even if I'm not playing a big thief. And stealth, because that powers the hide action and is probably the top two most called skill in most of the games I encounter. Uh, it's an essential amino acid to any rogue. And is this, uh, and in our tool proficiencies, this one gives us disguise kit, which is particularly lovely on a charisma rogue. Mm. None of these are the reasons why we picked background today. Not a single one of them. You get a pet mouse as part of the urchin background. I love that very much. Nothing else matters at that point. Uh, ev people, people will take uh, Beastmaster. They will be druids. They, we will go out of our way to have pets. And I say to you, look at the backgrounds, dear audience, <laughs> because you can get a pet mouse right off of the top. I had one on my wizard character at one point. Uh, I took it for the stealth proficiency, and I was like, oh! <gasps> So I had a little mouse who lives in my hat. <laughs> uh, I, 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 we already have an instant question from Ahmad saying, what are you naming the urchin's mouse? Hmm. Uh, that's a, the best and most important question. And I am culturally bereft. Amy, is there like a, an Errol Flynn-like counterpart here? When I was an urchin and my character's name was Tails, my mouse was named Heads, uh, mm -hmm. the, the true brains of the operation. I uh, feel like I don't... the mouse should be a different famous swashbuckler to go with it. You know what I mean? Uh, Zoro means fox, so it's kind of out. Um, but, <laughs> uh, 
But then again, like foxes go with the swashbuckling, which is kind of like Robin Hood's an archer, but it makes me think in that direction. All right, chat, we're taking suggestions on names for the urchin's mouse, um, which side note, we also uh, have, I believe, a consensus on the name. Um, we have settled Ooh. on uh, Elflin. Oh, Reaper Chip for the mouse? <gasps> yes. Okay, Reaper Chip was yeah. my favorite character because cute mouse. So uh -huh, I endorse uh -huh. this in the strongest possible language. Yep, yep. Done and done. Canon. Thank you, Key Squared. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Wonderful. Excellent. All right. Errol Elflin. Uh, and regular urchin. I was just getting curious and. Clicking around. Yes, all right. There are now lovely subtypes of urchins. Um, don't worry though, I think they all get a mouse. And if they <laughs> don't, forget that background. We do need to pick another uh set, right? Uh another tool proficiency. What what would we like? Yes. Uh can we see which tools are available? Because sometimes uh you get the whole shaboodle. Sometimes we have not. And Let's see. We it looks should... like my drop down doesn't want to show on the screen share, so I'm going to read the list. Uh, we have, it looks like pretty much all the suggestions. We've got alchemist supplies, we've got bagpipes, brewer supplies, calligrapher supplies, carpenter's tools, cartographer's tools. I'm wondering if this is a replacement. Does this ordinarily come with thieves' tools? Um, here's where I, I believe just forget it does, and all the time. This is one of the other reasons why I do like to establish backgrounds pretty early uh, in my character building and do the little D&D &D Beyond uh, uh, dance around. Because mm -hmm. particularly if you have lots of skills or there's skills you know you want to get, or there's a background you know you want that has a skill, that will open you up to be able to pick any skill. Uh, and so it is today with these. This is like the third tools. time on stream that I've been confronted by a giant list and had to go back and remember it's because I already have the thing. Um, not just counting today. Persistent issue. Uh, I just see I options. Just I get excited. Making... Uh, so <laughs> right. with that, we have those two are, to me, the core components of what I need as a rogue. Those are the ones that I most often take, which means that we can use this secondary tool proficiency for anything we want. This is a great, because rogues get so many proficiencies right off of the bat, it does also give us more space, a little room to take a flavor or to do something that personalizes your rogue. There, it much like Dex lets you be an int rogue or a whiz rogue or a charisma rogue because all you needed was the Dex. All I find any rogue needs is the tool proficiency. They already have the thieves tool. So if you want the disguise kit, Urchin happens to have it, but mostly the mouse. Uh, and so we can take alchemist if we want. We can take, I think poisoner kit is something that appeals to many. Um, mm. We can we can get brewery supplies. This is a great uh, place for creative expression. Heck yeah. Uh, I'm feeling uh... alchemy maybe today. Let's go alchemy for our, our particular mind. swashbuckler. Um, yeah. uh, and I do love, okay, the official description of what you get that I I, I will read in uh, because it's too good not to. You're going to get a small knife, a map of the city you grew up in, a pet mouse, a token to remember your parents by, a set of common clothes and a pouch containing 10 gold, uh, which is just tells a whole story which is what's so great about building characters. Backgrounds right. are so great. And that one truly is my favorite. I will put urchin background on wizards or anything because they do offer a lot of lovely flavor and murine companionship. <laughs> uh, I love that very much. Is murine the, the like vulpine or feline? Like equine, feline, canine, murine. I love it. Oh, okay, so good. Yeah, yeah.